Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Review Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures. I've been riding and guiding motorcycle trips around the world for over 10 years now. In this video, we're going to talk about KTM 790 Adventure R model and answer the big question, is it really the best adventure bike on the market today? Let's get into it and find out. answering that question is this the best adventure bike well different sized riders want different sized bikes so let's address the, the topic here as being the best middleweight adventure bike so a twin cylinder adventure bike in the 400 to 500 pound range because again larger riders want bigger bikes and this middleweight size bike might not be the best for the larger riders so in our pros and cons format let's talk about some of the high points and the lower points about this bike just for fun's sake Let's get the cons out of the way right away first. So the first on the list of cons we have to mention, get out of the way, of course, the downsides to this bike is that factor of KTM reliability. Okay, all jokes aside, KTM ultimately making a high quality bike, but still, after all these years, you have to consider that in reliability testing and consumer studies, still those big four Japanese bike manufacturers hold the title year after year in terms of reliability and overall quality standards and stuff like that. So KTM is making a great bike. I'm sort of jabbing them on the ribs here a little bit just to tease them. But there are some issues that we have detected and other riders are reporting about this bike and so let's get into those. In our own experience with this bike, we have had ignition switch failures, the actual barrel that the key turns into leaving the headlights on, uh, having the bike die on a rider while he was riding it, the engine just randomly quitting like that. Still trying to figure it out with KTM, it might have been a one-off thing, but it is something that has happened to us. So there was the issue of the rear brake line recall, check to see if the model that you bought was affected by that and you can have it switched out by KTM. Other riders are reporting rear shock failures and there's some suggestions that maybe the rear shock and the seals and such are too close to the catalytic converter and maybe having heat damage issues there. So some riders are repair, reporting early clutch failures, um, some oil leaks. We've had riders report a false neutral being found between fourth and fifth gear. But there are a few other quirks we should talk about, like the fact that the, the seat on this particular model is not adjustable. On the standard S model we call it, that seat was a split design and it was able to be lowered for those who you know desire a lower seat. It's unfortunate that they left this one in one position only with the seat. Uh, understandably so because of a one-piece design like that allows a rider to float a little bit more around on the seat. Um, so there's an advantage to that one-piece design but again those of us with shorter legs wish it was just a little bit lower so that would have been nice to have that lowered. Another little quirk to the bike would be the split tank design. While it's actually a great feature and that split fuel tank allows for the fuel to be held down low for a lower center of gravity, its split design means it would require some pretty sophisticated technology and hardware and parts in order to give you a fuel reading over and above a half tank. So again, when you're riding this bike, all you're really seeing is the measure of fuel available from a half tank down below. So you just have to pay attention to how many miles or kilometers you've ridden and pay attention to how you're driving and then watch for that indicator to show on the second half of the fuel tank reading. One other silly little mistake they made was making the oil cap actually difficult to remove because of how tightly it sits between the engine and the fuel tank. Not the end of the world, it's just a little bit of a challenge to maybe pull the tank upward and to the side or we've actually gone so far as to file down the corners of the, the grip on the oil cap. So just making it easier to spin on and off and um, easier access to adding oil. Another little quirk I wish they would not have done. Okay, they, great, they gave us two oil magnets in the two screens that go into the bottom of the engine. When you're changing the oil, you pull these screens and the magnets out. And to me, the amount of material and metal that you're getting on a magnet in the oil pan is a great indicator as to how your engine is performing and going to how it's going to last. You know, are you using the right oil? Are you abusing the engine? Do you need to change oil more frequently? There's a lot that you can gain and learn off of the readings on those magnets, but they're actually a real pain to clean because of how they inserted them and shrouded them within the plastic that is the rest of the, 
the, the screen holder, shall we say. So just wish they had made a more exposed magnet there or one that wasn't so difficult to clean off so that you can start with a fresh reading of metal particles every time that you change your oil. Again, I'm really just kind of picking here and it is kind of like a sound that only a mother can love, but a, the KTM engine does have that clankety clank sound. That sometimes you start it up and you're not sure if you actually put oil in it or not, but it is a sound you can learn to enjoy and know that it is a great solid well-built engine, but that sound for some of us still um, coming out the exhaust is not uh, so bad, but up near the engine itself, again, hearing what sounds like valves chattering can be a little unsettling at times. And then of course, maybe another quirk and not to jab KTM too much for being a busy company and doing very well, but there are a lot of quirks dealing with them, little things like them expecting you to pay to reset the break-in uh, indicator on the dashboard when you finally finish your 600 mile break-in on your bike and the parts availability and getting answers and questions about software. Look, I understand you guys are, you got your hands full with a great lineup of bikes, KTM. Um, not teasing you too much here, but there are those difficulties and challenges that have actually kept us from using KTMs in other parts of the world where even these parts networks and availability of getting replacements is, is more of a challenge than it is, for example, here in the U.S. And so we haven't been offering KTMs in all these parts in the world that we currently offer rental bikes. Okay, and that really sort of wraps up my list of cons, I will admit not a very serious list of faults or errors made by KTM in the design of this motorcycle. They ultimately did a great job. So let's get, get down to the good stuff here. Let's talk about the pros, the things that KTM basically hit it out of the park on. And with this bike, for starters, just like with so many other KTMs, you could say it is that beautiful KTM engine. That power, that roar. That lion that wants to tear something down and go before you even start it up. Yeah, I talk about the clankety clank, that sort of weird sounding engine with valves and stuff chattering and everything like that. But when you pour on that throttle on this bike, 790cc parallel upright twin, you've got a lot of power at your command available for whatever it is you want to do. And so, excellent job in this engine by KTM. Another great feature, I think, overall in that middleweight category is just the general stature and the style and the geometry of this bike. Again, if you talk about the middleweight adventure bikes, twin cylinders between four and 500 pounds, I think they balance this out right. They got the, the overall size and girth and stature of it right. Coming in only around 460 pounds, again, it gives riders that middleweight option. It doesn't have to be one of the over 500 pound pigs out there, but they've given us a bike that's comfortable for road riding, great once you want to head down the fire roads and dirt trails and stuff like that and that sort of great all-around average sized athleticism that I anyway if I was to choose a bike of this size really find beneficial. So although it contributed to one of the cons about the bike the split tank design being you know only showing your fuel readings from half and below hey the split tank great job KTM has had it before on older bikes 950 and 990 adventures and whatnot and it serves us really well here to have Again, some of that fuel weight down low for a low center of gravity, uh, keep the bike feeling light and agile up top like that. So um, definitely a con and a unique design. Also in that uh, if you end up with the bike on its side a little bit, uh, which they all do eventually, right? The, the fuel tank design will help you keep the bike propped up in some situations just slightly instead of having to pick up a dead flat bike off the ground, having it propped up a little bit by the fuel tank, kind of an advantage. So great size, great weight, great feel and layout of the bike. Also great suspension componentry and adjustability. So without having to break out the tools and hit the clickers down below, like we've had to on bikes in the years in the past, right up top here at the front of your forks, KTM has your preload options for adjustment and your compression and, and rebound dampening features. Right there with a couple of clicks, you can do it just by leaning the bike off the front fork, get the weight off a little bit, and you can adjust your preload and everything you need right there for changing riding conditions. Nice feature. The rear as well, you need to bust out a, an Allen wrench to do so, but at least it's there for you very quick and easy to make your rear suspension adjustments and make your ride just as uh, accurate as you want it to be and just for your situation. 
Much like with the standard version of this bike, the R version comes with great uh, control and, and software settings through an easily accessible menu system. And in addition with this bike, you get the rally mode too. Again, we're not gonna get into the details. You can find out about that from KTM's website, but you're able to adjust your traction control, your ABS, all those little features to you know adapt to road riding situations, rain, dirt, off-road, and things like that, and choose your desired mode. If you're like me, some riders would rather just turn off ABS and traction control completely when you're in the dirt and you have that option as well. So although they made the oil cap very difficult to remove on this bike, at least KTM did give us an oil sight glass window. Makes it super quick and easy just to check your oil level instead of pulling up just out dipsticks and wiping them off and stuff. The sight glass window is very convenient and easy to use. So in what could really be considered a pro or a con, the tubeless wheel set, the rims that KTM gave us, nice feature to have ultimately. When I say that it could be a con, of course, anybody that's ever smacked a rim hard enough to dent it knows that with a tubeless setup, you better hope that you have a, a tube with you because a dented wheel might not be holding air the way you want it to. So tubeless though, generally speaking, a very nice feature in that you can fix a flat tire in less than five minutes by plugging it and be up and riding again real fast like that. And then of course, one last feature, be your own judge. I think they made a pretty great looking bike. Call aesthetics important with everything and our purchasing decisions. I like it, a lot of people like it. Snazzy bike KTM, you make good looking stuff. You handsome devils, you. Oh, a lovely lady, hey baby, you're all right. So again, did KTM make the best adventure bike out there right now? Well, at least in the middleweight category, again, let's say twin cylinder, four to 500 pounds. I think they hit the ball pretty far out of the park right here. Some riders, riders have used the word perfect to describe this bike. As I pointed out in the cons list, not quite perfect. I'm being a little picky. I'm pushing, I'm giving them a little feedback here. There are some things that could be better, but really all together, KTM, a long anticipated bike. Nice job, you hit the ball out of the park. A lot of people are gonna love the 790 Adventure R model, whether it's for paved riding or for the dirt and long distance travel and packing up for big trips. So. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, ask for notifications as well if you want to see future videos that we've coming up. We've got coming up, and so thanks for watching. Ride on, everyone.